Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can taper objects using geometry nodes by using the spine parameter node. So in a recent video we were having a look at how to make this mechanical tentacle, and this is sort of a bit of a late stage in it where we've actually got everything combined into one object. And as part of this I made it so that the segments flow along the tentacle curve really well, but this means that they have to flex to do that. And some people might not want that. So in today's video, we're going to have a look at how we can make this object where we've got items flowing along a curve. And we'll also have a look at how, while doing that, we can make it so that it tapers in this way, or at least changes in size, whatever we put along it. So to demonstrate this, I've moved to an older version of this file, and I've opened it in Blender 4, just so we've got the most up-to-date version of Blender at the time of recording this. So what I've got now is access to this Bezier curve, and I'm going to Shift and D, and bring that off to the side so we've got a copy of this. Now, I don't actually need this thickness for this. So in my object data properties, I'm just gonna come down to the depth and put that as zero and just make sure we can see the line. So let's talk through the basics of how we'd put objects on this curve. And then importantly, we're gonna talk about the different options of making this tapering effect. Now, before we go any further, I'm just gonna go into edit mode. There is one thing that's very important we can see here and if I just come up to here in Blender 4 and go to the Curve Edit Mode Overlays, I'm going to put the normals on and then let's just make those a little bit larger so we can see them because there is a direction that a curve has and it's very important that we understand that we've got this direction. So what I'm going to do now is just come to the bottom here, let's drag up and let's go into our Geometry Node Editor. What I'm going to do is click New and we've got our geometry nodes there. Let's zoom in on those and we'll deal with the basics of this. Now, I'm also going to need a cylinder. So let's bring in a cylinder here. It's up that 64 vertices, so it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to get that to approximately the same size as our largest one over here. So let's go somewhere like there and then apply the scale. So what we want to do is be able to array this along this curve and it to taper as we go. So what I'm gonna do is just pin this so that we can click on other things and come back to it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna instance on this curve. So I'm gonna shift A and instance on points, pretty standard if you've seen some of my other videos, and we'll just drag this cylinder in to there, and I'm gonna put that as the instance. Now to make this easier to see, I'm just gonna bring in a join geometry Put that in there and then we'll join this to the original as well so we can see the line and you'll notice we've only got three points and there's a reason for that if i come into edit mode we can see we've only got three control points so we're going to want to change that so we can add more in so i'm going to shift an a and then resample my curve so let's put that in there and now we've got a count and we can control how many we've got now we do want to change this so that it is actually in a direction at the moment it isn't so I'm just going to make that smaller so we've got a little bit more space. And we're going to do that by controlling the rotation. And all we need to do is say to go on the tangent of this curve. So I'm going to shift A, type in tangent, bring in our curve tangent. And that won't work if we bring it into our rotation. Well, it sort of will, but it will do weird things. And that's because a tangent is not the same as a rotation. It's giving the information in a different way. So if I just using the line Euler to vector, I can put that into the vector because the tangent is a vector, not a rotation. That's the problem. Put that rotation in here and now I've got it working. We just need to tell it which way to turn and we want this so that our Z axis, so this direction here on the original object is the thing that's pointing along our tangent. So if I click Z, we've now got that working. So let's make that a little bit smaller. Now the final thing I want to do is we want to have this tapering effect. And this isn't actually too hard to do in geometry nodes. We just need to know what thing to look at like we were looking at this curve tangent. And for a curve, the proper name for a curve is a spline. If I just shift A and type in spline, we get this thing called spline parameter. I'm gonna talk about this not spline length. Spline parameter's got more useful bits to it. So I would use that. Now, here we get three options. I'm going to talk about these three options separately, but for now we're just going to look at factor. It's probably the most likely one that you're going to want, and it's the one that I want here, but I am going to talk about the other three to make sure you know what they do. So let's just drag that out. We need to combine X, Y, and Z, and I'm just going to plug that into all of those and drag that in here. Now, first problem is I actually want to keep these the same length. I only want them changing in width, 
So I don't want this to change on the z-axis, so let's get rid of that and let's put that to 1. So now we've got what we want. The other problem is that at the moment this is now going in the wrong direction. Now that is because of these normals that I mentioned earlier. You will see that our curve is starting here and flowing this direction. And what our factor is doing is effectively saying that this is 0, this is 1, that's what it's using for these scaling values, and we don't want that, we want the other way around. So the easiest way to do that is to do some very simple maths. So let's shift A, bring in a math node, and we want to do a subtraction, let's get rid of those, and importantly we want to have 1, and we want to take away whatever our factor is, and we'll plug that into the X and the Y. So now we've got this working great. Now there is one minor problem with that, and that is it doesn't go totally to the end, if I up that count there, you can see it sort of stops short of the end. If you want to affect that or change that, you can change this value from being 1 to 1.1, and that will go to the last point. So that's quite a good trick for this. Now this does have some problems, for example, because we're working on a tangent, any weird flexing back on itself of the curve doesn't work very well, it's going to be difficult to line these up perfectly with something going between them, which is why I generally prefer this curving method. But for a lot of other tasks, this is quite important. So what I'm going to do now is talk about the difference between the factor length and index, so you're really happy with each of those. So what I'm going to do is just set this up by getting rid of that middle point there. I'm going to get rid of this subtract node, just so it's not as complicated. And then let's just come into side view. I'm just going to move that down here. Let's rotate that round. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And let's rotate that round. So now we've got a really clear line for our curve that we can talk about. I'm also going to come here and then delete all of that. So what I'm going to do is make three versions of this. So let's Shift and D. And then Shift and D. And then importantly, we're going to make each of these separated from the other ones so that we can change them. So we do that by hitting that shield there. So this one at the top is going to be using our factor. This one here is going to be using our length. Move that up. And this one at the bottom is going to be using our index. So immediately we're going to notice there's quite a stark difference here. So let's start talking about each of these in a basic sense. So we'll start with the top one and we've already mentioned that this effectively goes from zero here to one here. Now what that means is whatever we do to this curve, grab this point and G and move it along, you'll notice that the extremes, the end here and here, will always be the same. There's always going to be zero and one and then what's useful about that is that this point here is always going to match our cylinder because we've set it to one. Now if I move this a little bit further, come down here and change the count, Importantly also, the count doesn't really affect this proportionality as we move it along. So we're going to get no difference there. Okay, so let's have a look at this one now, where we've got the length, and let's go into edit mode, and we're going to move this one. Now this, firstly, does go further than one because it's based on the length of the curve, shockingly from the name. And if I move this, as the curve gets longer, we're going to change the size of these points. Notice the beginning point stays the same. It's the one towards the far end on the right that is going to change in size. Now, if I just drag that out to about there, we'll also notice that if I up the count, this is not really going to affect those extreme ends. The only thing that affects them is the length. Finally, we'll move on to the index. Now this works off a different concept. If I press G and move this along, you'll notice that the instances aren't changing in size because the only thing that controls this is the count, not its length. So if I put the count up, now the end point is going to get larger because what the index does is give this a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on as you go further this way along the curve. So that means as I up the count, it's going to change the size because there's more items along the curve. Now there is a bit of a funky thing we can do with this as well, where if we change the count to length, let's not make that as extreme, so we'll do that there. Now, if I move this, because 
we change the amount of points as we go up in length. Now this is being controlled by both the length of the curve, but I can also change it by affecting how often we get a point along each of those lengths. So we've got three options there for how we want to control our instances along our curve either by using the factor, length or index on our spline parameter. Hopefully that was a good demonstration to show what happens and how these three functions are slightly different to each other. As I say, I often find the factor the most important one, which is why I use spline parameter instead of spline length, which limits us to, shockingly, just the length, which often isn't quite as controllable and as predictable as you might want it to be. If you found that useful, please do hit the like button. It makes it easier for other people to find the video as it comes higher up on their searches. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you want to support the channel further, we have a Patreon page where for a couple of dollars a month, you get these videos ad-free a week ahead of time and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.